Jupiter protects Saturn kills. Saturn hits you and Jupiter. <laughs> is it true? When is it true? Is it not true? When is it not true? Why is Jupiter acting like Saturn for me? Why is Saturn acting like Jupiter for me? Does it work that one planet acts like the other? Well, you have to understand that whenever you talk of Jupiter, it's very broad and very generalized. It's very broad. It's like, Im imagine Jupiter alone is the Karaka for how many houses? Second house, fifth house, ninth house, eleventh house, seventh house for a woman. And also sometimes the tenth house. So almost half of the horoscope. So, so just to say that Jupiter protects always is very vague and very generalized. And also it lords two houses and it is placed in one house. So imagine it's lording the third house, you know, or it's lording, you know, your uh, eighth house or twelfth house and it's placed in another house, which is not the, where Jupiter is not the Karak, you know, like another uh, first house. So then you have so many houses where Jupiter is involved, right? So, and then you come to Saturn. Saturn is like the Karak of a wish house. <laughs> <laughs> sixth house diseases and then he's also the karaka for the eighth and he's also the karaka for the tenth house right so it is very important that we understand astrology in its true sense which means you have to understand that whenever you are talking of one planet in general it's very generalized it is as if the planet is well placed in your chart okay <laughs> What does it mean, well placed? It means <clears throat> as if you know the planet is like uh, reasonably uh, placed, okay? Which means it it, it is in the uh, exaltation sign or own sign, you know, <clears throat> or friendly sign, you know, some something like that, okay? It does not mean that the planet is like uh, very very exceptionally placed, but uh, yeah, it 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 can mean the planet is well enough. To give you good results okay <clears throat> so then 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 you can understand oh that that is like the default expectation or the default assumption okay <clears throat> from a planet so otherwise uh but then in reality it may not be the case because see in reality what happens is <clears throat> like for example saturn is the karaka for the 6th house, 8th house, and also the 12th house, you know, along with the 10th house. But now suppose for you, Saturn is natural malefic, you know, pain, suffering, misery, sorrow, delay, setback, disappointment. Did I miss anything? <laughs> but now suppose this same Saturn is placed in your 5th house. Now it's very bizarre. 5th house, what is 5th house? You know, 5th house is the house of healing. Okay, so <clears throat> when you say 5th house, it is 12th to the 6th house, okay? <clears throat> so, which means it is the loss of disease, which is good health. Now, then it's very confusing. So, in Saturn Dasha, will I get diseases or I get good health? It's very confusing, right? You, you, you are like, okay, it is the Karaka for the 6th house, which means his job is to give me diseases. But now he's in the 5th house, so... Will he give me diseases or take me out of disease? Or will he not give me diseases at all? Will it be cancelled out? Well, exactly. It doesn't cancel out. You guessed it right. Because as the Karaka of diseases, wherever he is placed, he will give you diseases. Even if he is placed in the fifth house. But now, now, now he is in the fifth <laughs> He also has to give you results of the fifth house, which means he will also give you the cure, but with some, yeah, with some delays and uh, setbacks. But there will be cure 100%. So, then you say, oh, he's Karaka for sixth house and he's in the fifth, so he gave me disease and he cured. Similarly, Jupiter is the Karaka for good health because he's the Karaka for the fifth house of children. Right? Fifth house is past life good deeds, Purva Punya. 
now he is placed in the 8th or 12th hmm, 8 12 these are houses of surgery so now what will happen will he give diseases or will he uh, help you recover <laughs> what is it so now because he is in the 8th he will give you diseases just like saturn in the 5th but now because he is naturally Jupiter, he is the Karaka for the fifth house. Then he will try to keep the disease in such a to such an extent that your life doesn't stop. Okay, but he will give you diseases because he's in the eighth house, just like Shani in the fifth will because he's Shani, right? But Guru in the eighth will also protect you because he's Guru. So therefore. You have to understand this thing like, you know, Jupiter protects, uh, Shani hits you, you know, Jupiter, um, Shani kills, Jupiter protects, you know, you have to understand it in the right context. Otherwise, if you just make vague generalizations, you know, okay, Saturn Dasha is there, you will have bad health. Guru Dasha is there, you will have good health. Then you are setting yourself for a very wrong precedent because you are ignoring the houses. So in astrology, I can't quantify, but if I still make an effort to quantify things, you should give 80 to 90% of the weightage on the houses and 10% on the natural signification of the planet. Which means, even if it is Jupiter, the natural Karaka for good health, you will still have diseases if it is badly placed, especially in the Dusthana houses. In Jupiter, Dasha, of course, not that all the time you are diseased. Why? Because 80 90 percent of the weightage is on the houses. Because now that planet is behaving specifically for you and me. <laughs> so, therefore, if you ignore the house, you are just left with nothing. So, do not ignore the house and do not ignore the sign. So, for example, if Jupiter is exalted which means he's in cancer, like, let's say, you know, peak exaltation, like, you know, zero to five degrees, imagine. So then what happens if he's in a Dustana? So for example, if you are a Leo Lagna, Leo, for Leo Lagna, it gets very complicated. Why do I say this? Because for you, Jupiter is not only the Karaka for the fifth house, but he's also the Lord of the fifth house because Sagittarius is in the... Uh, fifth house right very complicated it's like double complication why it's even more complicated is also the eighth lord my god <laughs> and his exaltation is in the twelfth house oh my god super 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 confusing what will happen now mm -hmm. natural karaka for good health fifth lord eighth lord in the twelfth but exalted oh my god so generally uh when people are new to astrology, they will say, okay, Jupiter is, you know, one point for good. Then fifth lord, two good points. Eighth lord, one bad point. Twelfth lord, another bad point. Exaltation, good point. So it's like three good points versus two bad, you know. So ultimately who wins? One good point wins. So something good will happen. No, certainly not. <laughs> this is not how it works, okay. You cannot give magic points, you know, this is good, that is bad, so it will nullify. No, it doesn't work like that. It means the problems and uh, the good things will be there simultaneously. Because Jupiter will give results of all the houses, the 5th house, 12th house, 8th house, if he's in the 12th, of course, for a Leo Lagna. But then the question is, what will happen at the end? How do you figure that out? You say, oh, uh, something good and bad will happen. you know. But then the person is like, oh, but what's going to happen, right? <laughs> so then you have to say, okay, he's the fifth lord. So he will give you cure, first of all. He's also the natural Karaka for cure. So he'll give you cure. Now he's eighth lord also. So he will give you some accident, some sudden shocking things in your life. May not be health-wise, but some other area. Now he's also in the 12th. So it means he will also have expenditure. So it's like saying you have an accident and then you have a big expenditure <clears throat> or you are out of work for six months. And now he's exalted. 
Oh, what happens when there's exaltation? When a planet is exalted, then there is faith that I'll be able to handle this situation. And this is what, so if a planet is in a good house and exalted, so for example, if Jupiter is in your 10th house in exaltation, then it means you in Jupiter Dasha, you will do something in your profession which you will actually enjoy and you will love and uh, you, you will actually feel this is something which I meant to do always. If Jupiter is in the 12th house and exalted, then it means you will have problems, but you will have the awareness. Okay, this will go. You, you know how to tackle it. Either you know how to get rid of the disease or how to manage it. You know it. On the other hand, if Jupiter is in the 10th house in debility, then what happens is you are doing something. Something great is happening in your profession because it is the 10th house. But because it is in debility, you have no idea of what's going on. <laughs> now, how can it happen that you have no idea of how the work is going and still you get a promotion? It can happen that sometimes you get a promotion, but you, you your, your you know, new colleagues are not good. You know, you are not able to gel well with them you, you you have differences you know uh, there are confusions you know you don't know where the organization is heading all these things happen so this is like a bad jupiter in the 10th okay enemy sign or debilitated or something like that no and a bad jupiter a bad jupiter which means you know jupiter in capricorn in the 12th house oh my god you are having diseases and you have no idea how to come out of it it's like worse so this is what it means when they say it is exalted but in a dustana. What does it mean? People always ask, you know, if my guru is exalted but in a dustana, what will happen? This is what happens. You will face problems. The dustanas will not spare you because the planet is exalted. It cannot happen. But you will have the awareness how to come out of it. And gradually you might be able to come out of it depending on your chart. So, for example, if your Jupiter is exalted and in the 12th house, you know, you are a Leo Lagna. But your overall, your planets and your Mahadasha, Antardasha, they are not actually agreeing for, you know, something uh, good in your health or in your profession. Then it can mean that till the end of that Mahadasha, even though your Jupiter is exalted. <clears throat> and you know how to come out of it, but you will still not be able to come out of it. it it's like, you know, external things will not be in your favor. The Dusthanas make external things unfavorable for you, period. That is the job of the Dusthanas. So if Jupiter is badly placed, and on the contrary, if Saturn is well placed, then now, 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 Saturn is Saturn, right? So Saturn will give you challenges to come up. Even though he's exalted, own sign, mool, tricone, debilitation, doesn't matter. He will give you problems. But the more... Saturn is well placed house wise, sign, sign wise, the more you will be able to grow, you will be able to learn from that experience. Okay, so a bad Saturn will give you no lessons. You will just, so a good, a good Saturn, bad Saturn, both will give you misery. Because what is common between a good and a bad Saturn? What's common? <laughs> good Saturn, bad Saturn, what is common? Saturn. <laughs> So either it is good or bad, Saturn is always there. You can't just dismiss it. It's good Saturn, bad Saturn, not so good Saturn, terrible Saturn, you know, excellent Saturn. But it is always Saturn. Saturn will give you problems in Dasha, period. There's no second opinion on this. But the question is, after the end, at the end of the Saturn Dasha, do you succumb, do you crumble to all the problems or do you rise above it? That is what is a good Saturn or a bad Saturn. So if you think... My Saturn is in Libra, in Tula Rashi, in exaltation, you know, in the 10th house, you know, maybe I'm Capricorn, Lagna, and my Shani is in the 10th, in exaltation, you know, giving Siddha Yoga, Lagnesh in the 10th exalted, and I will never have problems in life. Oh, wow, you are, <laughs> you are heading in for a disaster because, uh, it will be full of problems in your profession because Saturn is in your 10th. But you will be a 
you will be a phenomenal taskmaster you will people will salute you and if your saturn is in debility in the 10th then yeah you're doing something you know here there yeah life is going on. that's it no growth you may get opportunities but even though you get you will not be able to handle uh, opportunities like for example uh, like not to be judgmental against uh, rich families but generally it is seen in many cases that uh, people who uh, are born in rich families and they are not cultured this is the second condition okay if they are born in rich families and they do not get they only get money but they don't get a good culture they don't get a good upbringing then you will see they will always waste the resources okay even though they may be good or bad in their own profession or they may have the profession of their mother father even or they may have something else doesn't matter but they will ruin the name of their parents and they will ruin their own lives why because because of their good karma they were born in some good family good in the sense you know rich family because of their past like karmic deeds you know they may be very rich they may be very smart they may be very attractive to look they may be very cunning sometimes or they may be very expert in business but they may like character you know they may cheat others they may do forgery you know all this nonsense so then what happens is you you lose it okay so this is like the example of a good house placement but a bad sign which means you get things but you lose it so therefore you have to understand that there is nothing like a good saturn or a bad saturn or a good jupiter or a bad jupiter it depends on the chart and of course i am now only talking of the lagna chart the d1 you know then there is d9 then there is d10 there's d7 you know there's d12 you know most important divisional charts and d60 also so you have to see those charts also to understand what is going on at the end okay but today's video was an attempt to give you a perspective on how to actually you know read the horoscope how to read a planet how to read jupiter how to read saturn should you just make blanket statements you know like guru is exalted it is nice <laughs> or shani is debilitated you know but in 10th house you will not have a job no so you you have to understand right so so that means the statement uh, jupiter protects and saturn hits you is maybe always not true okay it depends it can be true or it it could be the other way around also jupiter hits saturn protects <laughs> so the end conclusion is is it depends on your chart and your horoscope placements which is again a part of the chart okay so and all the other planets and your dashas okay so planets overall chart and dashas and transits if you want <laughs> but we do the opposite we say oh jupiter is in transiting in my 7th house i'll get married oh what does my dasha say dasha says 50 50 maybe i will maybe i will not right oh where is my jupiter jupiter is here oh what does my overall chart say there's no potential for marriage oh i see no actually it's the other way around <clears throat> last time you know planets overall chart dashas transits all right i hope that makes things clear all right thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for your patience if you like this video hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new and if you want a consultation from me my website is down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of how good or bad is your jupiter or saturn <laughs>